Well, if you cast your mind back to March 2020, we witnessed uh, what was just un- unheard of before, the closure of thousands of businesses in the Ballarat region. Amongst them, the health and fitness industry shut down. Not good for our body and not good for our mind and, uh, of course, not good for our pockets as well. It did untold damage to so many businesses. One business is in town is trying to fight back, though, and trying to recoup some of those losses. It is uh, Body and Soul. Their owner is Mel Tempest, who joins me in the studio this morning. Hello, Mel. Good morning, Brett. How are you? I'm really well. Welcome back to the program. Thank you for having me. You and I have spoken about physical fitness before. We have. We've spoken about mental fitness before. Absolutely. Now we need to speak about the fitness of business owners' wallets, don't we? We do. Their bank accounts are zero. Yeah. Now, let's go back in time. What did it look like at Body and Soul for you when things shut? Um, So, as you know, Body and Soul Genesis has been open for nearly 18 years. So, for us to shut the doors and not be able to contribute to the community was absolutely devastating. We we opened our facility, you know, to create a non-intimidating environment that was going to change people's lives. And to have that taken away, not just from us, but from our community, it was actually quite devastating for us. I remember when I was told I had to shut the doors, I was actually crying inside the studio because Mm. it was like, when will I teach my next class? When will my veterans come back through the door? When will my older adults come back through the door? So not knowing the answer to that was quite upsetting. And of course, with the health and fitness industry, Mel, I'm not sure why, but you always seem to be the first to close and the last to reopen. Yeah, I think it's sad to say this, though we we play a really positive role in people's lives, the media has portrayed us to be something different. And the industry has changed a lot over the last 15 years. So we're more than a bicep curl down the back of the gym. (laughs) We're not steel plates anymore or glossy, you know, posters on the wall. We're really about changing people's lives, both on the physical and the mental scale. And until the media portrays us that way, we'll always be looked at in a negative manner. In fact, uh, you point out, Mel, that you serve, you've already mentioned the elderly, You, you, you mentioned war veterans, people with a disability, people going through cancer treatment, people with chronic illness. It's the whole a whole spectrum of our community. Yeah, I mean, as I said, gyms are more than just going for a quick workout. Yeah. You know, for some people, coming to the gym is the best part of their day. They don't like going to work and they don't like going home. It's a place where people are unjudged and that was taken away from them. Well, you're open again now. Uh, are people embracing getting back to their gyms if they come back en masse? I know you still have density limits in place. We do have limits in place. So a facility my size isn't allowed to have more than 100 people mm. in there at any time. But the great news is that people are now receive their second vaccine shot. So what they're doing is they're coming back into the club. They feel more confident to be getting in there and getting a workout. Okay. 280 days, you did your sums, Mel, of no income. 280 yep. Yep. days. That's it's correct. Horrifying stuff. So that figure, along with the other things we've been talking about, have compelled you to write to the city of Ballarat. What have you asked for? Um, I've asked for a rate relief. It's not just about the gyms in Ballarat. It's also about every other business in Ballarat. You know, there are a lot of family-owned businesses here that need some financial help. There are retail boutiques, there's cafes, there's health and fitness studios, there's wellness studios, and we're getting nothing, absolutely nothing from the Ballarat Council. But if you look at Gold Plains, we went into lockdown March, you know, last year. In April, they implemented, you know, a a plan for their rate payers. They went straight into action to help these guys out so that when they do open their doors, they don't open with COVID debt. Now we have an issue here in Ballarat that the majority of businesses, they're opening their door with debt and they're never going to be able to recoup that. And Ballarat Council needs to come to the party and help us out. So Mel Tempest, if we look at the Golden Plains model, you're requesting a rate reduction equalised to the time of closure. So get the calculator, calculator out, you work out what you're paying for 365 days a year per day you do the sums for 280. Is that what you're saying? And and take that off what you owe. Yeah, absolutely. Why not? I mean, let's face it, our businesses were closed. We weren't deriving an income. We weren't providing a service. So therefore, Ballarat Council couldn't provide us with the service if our doors were locked. So they need to give us something in return. If we look at any business, Mel, and you point this out in your letter, if you uh, charge for a service that you're not providing, you're probably going to get the the friendly folk from the ACCC tapping you on the shoulder, aren't you? Oh, absolutely. So you're suggesting you're not getting service for what you've paid for. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, as I spoke to you before, you know, ACCC are now coming down hard with health and fitness facilities that are debiting uh, members' accounts when the, the businesses are closed. We're not allowed to do that. 
That's a no-no. So how can the council charge us when our doors are closed? You've written to council. Yes. What have you heard? I've ha- I have wrote to all of the councillors. As you know, I've put it up on uh, Facebook and on LinkedIn. Mm. I've had one email come back from Samantha McIntosh. It was a very brief email. She acknowledged that I had wrote to them. I haven't heard of any other councillor uh, whatsoever. Tracy from Absolute Yoga has been a great support in the previous months, but I haven't spoken to her for a little bit. Um, other than that, I haven't heard from anybody. And this is really disappointing because we are a locally owned and operated business like many others in this community and they need to recognise that we are asking for help. Last year, Council applied a 0% rate rise, Mel. Uh, They put uh, a 1.5% rise on this year, which is the maximum allowed by the state government. At this radio station, we've suggested quite strongly that it should have been zero again. But they say, look, there's services to deliver, there's roads to build, etc., etc. We have our bills to pay. Do you really think they're going to listen to you and reduce your rates? Um, You know, the very, very disappointing if they're not going to support local business. I have heard that there's been a bit of a chamber conversation happening in the last 24 hours. So I'm hoping hoping that after 11 o'clock today, we are going to get some good news. Uh, I'd be really disappointed. Yes, they, of course they should reduce our rates. They need to help us out. I can't believe that they're saying they're going to increase the rates by 1.5% to service the community when they're not even serving us now by listening to our needs. We've got the Mayor on after 11 o'clock today, Mel, so I will put uh, your point of view to him. It's going to be very interesting to see what his response is and given time to see what Council as a whole, what their response is. It will be interesting and more than happy to go into battle with the Council at any time. Mel, let's just end on a positive note. Uh, as a uh, you know speaker, advocate, influencer, fitness guru... Um, you know, we've got more cases today. We didn't quite get a donut day out yesterday. What do you? What's your message for the people of Ballarat? How do we stay positive? Look, everybody, just get up and move. If you're not going to the gym, just go for a walk down the street, go for a walk around the lake. But most importantly, stay in touch with people. If you haven't heard from somebody for a while, please pick up the phone, throw them a text because looking out mm. for each other is all that we can do right now. It's even harder with masks on at the moment too. You know how, Mel, you'd often give a stranger in the street a bit of a bit of a smile? G'day. How are you going? Nice day. It's tough to do it's that. It's very informal yeah. and I can't wait for the masks to go. Yeah, I think they're going to be around a little while longer though, Mel Tempest. Mel, good luck in your fight. Thanks Thank you. for sharing your story. On 